proceeding to my favorite, the bar chart, because it's so useful. Right? It is so useful. It doesn't show any relationship where there isn't, doesn't show any trend where there isn't. It's really nice, a good way of presenting and communicating data, especially when we want to compare numbers together. Okay. So it uses bars to show and help compare metric values across different categories within a dimension. The dimension is country, different categories are the names of the country, and it's showing the numbers. We can, of course, switch the styling, show and hide the numbers. They can be compact numbers or the actual numbers. Those are easy stuff. We are not going to spend time on them. But the first one only had one metric applied. We can apply multiple metrics and show them for each of the categories of the dimension. So for each categories within our dimension, we can show multiple metrics. This is one of the features of any kind of proper bar chart visualization, any program, and also here in Data Studio. When we have multiple metrics, we cannot break them down by another category. But if you're basically using one metric like users, then instead of having another metric side by side with it, we can break it down by another dimension. So here we have two dimensions applied to this bar chart. The first one is the main dimension on the x-axis, which is showing the name of the countries, right? It helps us see how many users that we have from each country. But the second one, we cannot see it in the, uh, on the axis, but it's the user type returning versus a new visitor, which breaks down the same chart, which was a little bit higher to 28 K here, United States number of users, it breaks it down to two different values adding up to 28K, right? So two dimension and one metrics is also something that bar chart is capable of plotting. And then in this case, if we want to see the actual total as well, because now we lost the ability to see the absolute total, we cannot see 28,000 here, right? As the total number of users, we can use a stack breakdown. So we can apply the breakdown if we choose it to be stacked. Now we can see single bar, but they, they are stacked together, which I usually really prefer because I can see the trend in totals as well across different categories. So for example, here, if these are close, so if we have United States or if we have like for United Kingdom or Canada, it's really hard to figure out which one is actually higher in terms of total value. But when we are stacking them, I guess it's still hard, but... Maybe UK is a little bit higher in here. Horizontal, one of the, my favorites. So whenever we have a large number of categories within the dimension, just like here, I, I've chosen to only show six countries, but we know that for a website, we always usually get users from more than six countries, right? Or if within a country, we want to have it per city or per region or per anything else, there are lots of times that we have more than five, six, 10 categories to show, and it will become really cluttered if we want to show them in a kind of vertical way, especially if the values of the categories are long. So in this case, I would like to use the horizontal bar chart, which allows me to use the horizontal real estate to show much longer values. So even if I'm working with very long values of text, I can move it here and have everything nice and clean without truncation or wrapping in the second row. And because I'm using just the same amount, regardless of the length of the category value, I can have many more. So I can use the size of this component and maybe have up to 25, 40, 50 different values shown together in a really nice and clean way. I believe it was Rob that some time ago suggested that in these cases, we better have the highest value at the bottom. So it's more stable, the chart that you're looking at. But here in Data Studio, if I want to do this, I guess I need to change the sort to descending, which brings the counters with fewest users to the top and the most important ones will vanish from this chart. And I might also do something else, reversing y-axis, which yeah, makes it much more stable in a way that it doesn't feel like it is falling yeah. It has a connection with data storytelling. I think we spoke about it earlier. So the reason why it's default to the highest value is at the top, because 
most of us, we are reading from top to bottom, from left to right. That's why the y-axis is on the left. And that's why the highest value, which is usually what our client wants to know about, yeah. is the one at the top. So maybe visually this looks good if you're looking, I don't know, from a couple of feet away. But the clients will prefer the highest value at the top and yeah. going from left to right. I should also agree that horizontal stack bar is the one I mostly use. It's great. Yeah. It can tell a lot of information on just one slide. Yeah. yeah, better use of real estate as well. So yeah, so, thank you for the feedback. I really appreciate that and agree with your point on that. Horizontal is stacked. On a horizontal bar chart, we can also apply another dimension and break down the values. Why? We can not only see the total numbers, but we can see the breakdown, for example, here, the age bucket of the user. And again, just like the area chart, if we are not at all interested in seeing the total trend, maybe we are looking at, I don't know, market share or distribution or whatever, and we are only focused on finding out the differences and trends in distribution over time, regardless of the actual total value, then we can use 100% stack, right? For this, which I found it in, in some cases when it makes sense, it's really a good way of visualizing it.